Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, which is about scaling your data ingestion using an ingestion framework. So my name is Liz McCraish, and I'm joined today by my colleague, Sai Shri Ramaswamy, and to, we are data and analytics consultants at Thurgood. If you've got any questions at all about anything related to data and analytics, please feel free to reach out to either of us, either on email or via LinkedIn. So what we're going to cover today is a quick introduction to Thurgood. We'll go through some challenges that we see with our clients around data ingestion. We'll talk about how an ingestion framework can help mitigate those. We'll give you an overview of what that would entail. And then we'll also go through some real, real world examples that we've implemented at some of our customers. For those of you who aren't familiar with Thurgood, we're a global independent data and analytics specialist firm. We blend business understanding with strong technical skills and a deep understanding of analytical tools. We offer a full range of services, including strategy and roadmaps, development, requirements gathering, design, and training and support. As I mentioned, we're independent, so we have relationships with the kind of the main technology suppliers in our industry. We've got a, a few of them up here. We've, what, the reason for our independence is we think it gives us a, a better opportunity to actually meet the needs of our clients, regardless of what technology stack is that best fit. Okay, so we mentioned we're going to go through and talk about data ingestion challenges. So what are some of the challenges we see within our customers? So one with around data quality. So we haven't got standardized procedures in place for things like data validation, cleansing, transformation. It can lead to an inconsistent data quality across different data sources. And that then makes it challenging to take that data and ensure you're actually reporting accurate and correct results. If there is no methodology in place, then data ingestion might be happening in more of an ad hoc manner. So that can lead to different teams or departments using different ways of working, which can lead to, again, issues with data, data fragmentation, data is in silos, and it can lead as well to a lack of cohesion and making it difficult to integrate and harmonize the data from the various sources. If you're developing your pipelines in a non-standard way, it means you can actually increase your overhead for development and maintenance. So if each pipeline is being developed individually and customized specifically, then you're losing the benefit of being able to do a lot of reusing of code and repurposing. And this can kind of lead to a duplication of effort and some inefficiencies in the ways of working. If you've got a, stru a structure in place, then it means you can look and, and add in new patterns and new ways of ingesting data. Maybe you didn't used to use data from APIs, but now you need to incorporate that. Having a framework in place that makes it easy to scale that up is, is key. And the last point I was just going to make, so if you're not kind of covering off your security and compliance risks, it can lead to, to data vulnerabilities. You could lead to unauthorized access, any legal implications or reputational issues if you haven't got the right data privacy in place. So let's see what we mean by a data ingestion framework. Simply put, it's a structured approach and a set of tools as well that are designed to streamline and standardize the data ingestion process within an organization. And there are many advantages to doing this. So standardization, I kind of touched on a little bit. What this does, it really establishes an organized set of best practices, guidelines for data ingestion across the company and ensures that consistency and uniformity in data quality, reducing the development effort. So any common tasks such as auditing, error handling, logging can all be created once and reused. And then anything that is specific to that particular data feed or data ingestion pattern can be focused on and done separately. Another useful way of thinking about your framework is using metadata to drive a lot of the functionality within the system. So let's say for this bottom example here, we wanted to bring on a new market. All we would need to do is update the configuration file, add in the new market and where we're pulling that data from. And there's no code changes required. We can just hit go, rerun our routines, and that data will then get ingested from the new, the new source and path. Data governance and compliance. So I think that is key. We see a lot of our customers at the minute are very interested in data governance and how they can put something in place. So there's a few areas within data governance and compliance. Banging on a drum here, but that standardized, standardization and consistency is key. Having those established procedures and formats for data ingestion means that you have got your data in a consistent and uniform manner. 
data lineage is something again we see a lot of our customers very very interested in being able to track the data journey from source to destination is important and understanding any transformations that have taken place along the way data validation and quality assurance again these are common things we're seeing at our customers I'm working a client at the minute and we're literally setting up their data quality framework. So what checks need to be in place at the different levels of the transformation of the data. So we've got a number of predefined data quality frameworks that, that we will bring plus additional ones then that working with our clients that we will add into that. This enables you to flag any anomalies, any inconsistencies and errors right from the source. Auditing and compliance does what it says in the tin, allows you to track and log the data ingestion activities. And security and access control. This can cover a, a number of different areas, such as you know actual access to the data, what needs to be encrypted at which part of the journey, is any of the data sensitive and needs to be anonymized, and just other considerations around that. So there's uh, quite a few layers to that security and access control. And then future ready and scalable. If you look at the whole data quality framework and the kind of ingestion framework at a whole, it might seem a bit daunting. But you can start and build it up as you're going along. So you might just start off with some simple logging and error handling. And as you bring more sources into the, your, your organization, you can might add in some more data validation, think about your archiving, and you set that up once and use that for all of your sources. Again, you might get more sophisticated as time goes on, building up a data catalog and having active alerting. So when you do your data quality checks, if you do find an issue, then the correct people get alerted straight away. So hopefully that helps to give you a feel for some of the areas to consider when you're setting up an ingestion framework. And now Saishri is going to go through some real world examples where we've implemented ingestion frameworks with some of our clients. Thanks, Liz. Let us take a look at some real world examples of data ingestion framework that we've implemented for our clients and bring to life some of the benefits that Liz has been describing. The first example that we are going to look at is an ingestion framework that we have developed for a consumer packaged goods company. This is a metadata driven data ingestion framework that is used at scale for multiple retailer ingestions and that maintains data consistency across multiple markets and retailers to provide a standard view. Let us deep dive on the architecture built and the technologies used in this framework and see how this can be scaled across retailers. In this ingestion framework, Azure data flow is used as the orchestration tool driven by metadata. Metadata is a set of variables and parameters which essentially controls the data flow and helps in maintaining the standard process. Metadata holds the information to interpret each file that we receive for any retailer, such as the file extension, source and destination paths, the initial rows to be skipped while reading the source file, number of weeks to be retained throughout the system, primary keys and partitions to handle upsets for dimension data and restatements for fact data and so on. In this framework, metadata is stored in Azure SQL database and copied over into Azure Data Lake through Data Factory. Majority of the transformations in the system is handled in Databricks and Azure Data Lake storage is used to store the transform data at each layer. Data is ingested in a uniform manner and any source file, be it CSV or an Excel file or a zip file or files extracted from API or SFTP is ingested and stored in a uniform manner and within the data lake it will be stored as an open source delta format. We are using a three-layered architecture in Data Lake following Databricks best practices with L0 as the bronze layer, L1 as silver, and L1 plus as the gold layer. Landing zone that you see in L0 layer is the folder that holds the source file in its original format. Source files are archived and logs are captured for every run to mo facilitate monitoring and debugging in case of failures. The next layer that comes in L0 is staging, which is a temporal layer to copy over the data from landing into delta format. If, for a retailer, the number of objects that can be ingested is 10, but we are ingesting only one dimension data in the current flow, then how does the framework determine the relevant metadata information? That is done by scanning the files in the landing zone, and based on the file pattern, the relevant metadata information will be picked, which drives the subsequent steps in the flow. Any predefined data quality checks, such as data dictionaries to validate the schema, checking the null columns, checking the granularity of the data, is done at this layer. So every file, irrespective of the type or the retailer, will follow the same flow of data quality checks or validation. And again, 
metadata is used to specify the columns that define the granularity for that object. Raw history is the next layer in L0, which holds the latest file data along with the history. This includes any restatements for fact data and upsets for dimension data based on the partitions and primary keys defined in metadata. The next layer in data lake is L1. L1 is the layer where we define retailer specific transformations, retailer specific business logic, columnar transformations, and harmonizing the data into a star schema. Any specific aggregations or data rollups and curating the data for reporting purpose is defined in L1 plus layer. While loading into L1 or L1 plus, only relevant partitions are loaded or restated without impacting the history data for each run. In this framework, the final data consumption layer is Azure SQL Data Warehouse and data from L1 plus layer is copied over on an incremental basis through Azure Data Factory. As we can see, this framework allows retailer specific transformations while keeping the flow as generic as possible. Once the file is placed into landing zone, the flow is generic while the data is loading through the L0 layer, whereas L1 layer is retailer specific and L1 plus is predominantly generic, but it also allows retailer specific aggregations or rollups for required objects. The copy from L1 plus to SQL data warehouse is fully generic which makes the framework scalable for multiple retailers. This ingestion framework has significantly reduced the development effort required to ingest a new retailer or a new data feed. Any new feature inclusion to the framework like logging or alerting mechanism can be applied for all the retailers and does not require the effort to change the data flow for each retailer. Moving on, let's move on to another example of ingestion framework that we have developed for a US pharmaceutical company using AWS CloudStack. The source data set in the system spans across different business functions like clinical studies, medical affairs studies, lab studies, which contains large volume of data. The data sets range in formats from CSV or zip files to custom format for clinical trial data like SDTM. Some data existed on on-prem network drives while others on SaaS managed AWS cloud servers. An ingestion framework was developed to handle all these nuances of data ingestion and allow data discovery. As one of the business goals in the system was to enable data cataloging. For example, if a user must run a correlation between patient age and a particular symptom, they need to understand which clinical trial file had the required attribute. In this framework, AWS data pipelines are used to copy over the data from SFTP servers to S3 buckets in client's AWS space. Databricks running on AWS EC2 servers are used for data transformation. An added advantage of using Databricks was the SQL functionality that it provides. As the client business analysts were proficient in SQL, they preferred it as a mechanism for their analysis. AWS Glue Data Catalog is used for crawling the source files and cataloging the different attributes and columns in the files. AWS step functions are used to coordinate the execution of different tools. Combined with metadata files, the ingestion framework can ingest newer data sets with minimal changes. This allows the business analyst to focus on data analysis and leave the data extraction, transformation, discovery activities to the ingestion framework. I will try to summarize some of the key points and benefits of an ingestion framework. From the examples, it is clear that the ingestion framework is a methodology and the principles can be applied on any technology platform. Ingestion framework can increase the speed of delivery and reduce the overhead of onboarding any new data source from scratch. Ingestion framework ensures consistency and standards throughout the system. Ingestion framework provides a basis for innovation and evolution through a modularized central code base. Here are some interesting features in ingestion framework that we have implemented for our clients. As we've seen earlier, ingestion framework facilitates different aspects of a smart run that includes schema evolution. It provides mechanisms to enforce schema validation to ensure data quality by rejecting writes when source data does not match with the defined schema. We all know that the data structure or the schema evolves based on the business requirement. Ingestion framework allows easy change to the current schema to accommodate the data that keeps evolving over time. Ingestion framework allows leveraging the features available in any technology like metadata harvesting, which involves discovering the data source information and capturing the metadata to create a central repository. 
This automatically tracks the column name and data types that helps to understand the source data and to perform impact analysis. Ingestion framework allows us to enable an application to handle transient failures by automatically retrying failed operations to recover from intermittent connection errors or network outages, which will improve the stability of an application. The retry policy can be tuned to match the business requirement of the application and nature of the failure. Ingestion framework and metadata are used to manage dependencies between different ingestion jobs and processes. This helps in defining the execution sequence and ensuring that the data dependencies are satisfied before running any job. To close, I would like to talk about some next steps in your data and analytics journey and how we can help you. Tharagood has experience in getting various enterprise organizations to start their ingestion framework journey. Based on that expertise, we can help to choose and implement various technological tools to get started. If you already have a solution in place for data ingestion, we can help define strategies on the current approach and implement multiple facets of data governance features that can be scaled and to produce a roadmap for future development. With this, we have come to the end of this webcast. Hope you enjoyed and were able to benefit from the session. Please feel free to reach out to me or Liz to know about more about any of the topics that we have discussed today. Thank you and have a good rest of your day.